Phil Calvert is a senior fellow with the China Institute at the University of Alberta and a former diplomat, a Canadian diplomat in China and Asia. And he joins me this evening to talk about uh, this uh, Huawei decision in Great Britain and implications possibly for Canada. Mr. Calvert, good to speak with you tonight. Thanks for uh, taking the time. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Peter. I want to get to Canada and Huawei in a moment, but let's start with the UK decision today to allow limited access for Huawei to Britain's new 5G network. Why do you think Boris Johnson has given this access even over the objections of the Americans? Well, I suspect that what's happening is that Boris Johnson and his government are trying to find some kind of balance between two very difficult kinds of decisions or, 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 or paths. Um, on the one hand, as in Canada, I, I imagine the telecom companies, they like Huawei equipment. It's, it's cheaper. And so there's probably I, there's pressure from the telecom companies in Britain to adapt this, to use uh, adapt Huawei, uh, uh, allow Huawei 5G into the country. And uh, on the other hand, he's got to address the security issues and satisfy the United States uh, by uh, addressing their security concerns as part of a Five Eyes network. So uh, what he's done is try and find a balance. And I... Uh, uh, the U.S. doesn't seem to appreciate that, and they have reacted very strongly against his decision, as you may have noticed. Right. I mean, the calculation he's making is that, that it's possible to allow Huawei a role in the 5G network, but, but keep yeah. it away from sensitive data and, and protect British citizens. Uh, are you convinced of that? Well, I'm not convinced of that. It's interesting, you know, Canadian security agencies disagree on that as well. Uh, you know, back in November, uh, it was revealed that uh, CSIS was quite... Uh, uh, against uh, any uh, allowing uh, Huawei uh, licensing, allow, allowing Huawei 5G uh, equipment into Canada. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the CSC appear, appeared to think that they can mitigate the uh, the uh, the threat. Uh, their UK is ask is allowing about 35 percent, they say, of uh, uh, of, of its uh, infrastructure uh, to be uh, accessed by Huawei. They've agreed to work with other Five Eyes members to. Uh, find other suppliers, but uh, um, I don't think, I'm, I'm not convinced that that's the, the, that this threat can be mitigated. All right, let, let's talk about Huawei in Canada. We're still waiting, of sure. course, for a decision from the Canadian government on whether Huawei will be part of the 5G, 5G wireless network uh, development in this country. How do you think this decision by Britain today affects the Canadian government's, uh, you know, not to get ahead of myself, decision on this, but thinking on this? Does some have suggested, look, this this gives them a pathway to go ahead and do what Great Britain's done because Great Britain Great Britain's done it. What do you think? Well, you know, it raises the issue again, puts more pressure on Canada to uh, to uh, 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 make a decision on this. Uh, certainly, I imagine that. Uh, Telecom companies are looking at this and saying, okay, Britain's done this. So as you said, Britain's done this. So this is a path forward. But we have to be very careful on this. And there's really two aspects to the question. One is the security side of things. And uh, our relationship with the United States uh, and our, as members of the Five Eyes intelligence sharing network is very important. And uh, the U.S. has made it very clear uh, to Canada and to others that uh, they really don't want to see five uh, or Huawei access to our system and that, that would threaten this uh, this network and our place in the network. So we have to be very careful about that. But the other part of this is a political question. You know, we've got two Canadians uh, who are in jail. Uh, uh, they were arbitrarily detained uh, unjustly in reaction to the extradition proceedings, legal extradition proceedings against uh, the Huawei's chief financial officer, Meng Wanzhou. So for the, for the Canadian government to to uh, allow Huawei access uh, to uh, to approve Huawei while these people are in jail is uh, is politically very dangerous. I would think. In, in, in fact, the message should be that uh, to Huawei is that we're not even going to look at your application. We're not even going to consider your application while these these two Canadians are in jail, and and then we'll give it some thought. But um, I believe if the government is you know decides to approve Huawei now, uh, there's going to be tremendous backlash, and justifiably so. Right. Did you, uh, do you think the, I mean, a lot of questions today for the government about why this is taking so long. Uh, everybody else is making decisions on Huawei, and the Canadian government says it still needs to do more investigation, more research. Uh, do you think there's a direct link between the time it's taking to make this decision and the detention of those two Canadians in China? Well, I'd be surprised if there weren't some kind of direct link, just because it makes the situation so complicated. As I said, it makes it more than a security question. It means it meets, makes it a question related to our bilateral relationship. And uh, 
uh, I would imagine there's great division between the different uh, players in this as to how we should proceed. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to, it's, I mean, uh, you're the diplomat, but it seems to me it would be hard to, hard not to think that this has come up in conversations with the Chinese, sure. uh, that, you know, approving Huawei, uh, they've made it clear that the detention of Meng Wanzhou, the Huawei executive, is directly connected to the fate of yeah. those Canadians. Uh, wouldn't be unrealistic, would it, to think that, uh, that the conversation around approving Huawei is part of that uh, discussion or negotiation, too? Yeah, I don't know if China has sort of put that into the mix in terms of uh, getting released for the two Canadians, but uh, their focus has been on the release of Meng Wanzhou. And publicly, they claim, of course, that there's no connection, but, but it's understood that there is, that this is a retaliatory action. Uh, listen, I think this is a, a, a difficult uh, time for them, but um, you know, one of the things that you've seen is that China has become increasingly uh, 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 aggressive in its public discourse on this in other countries. You know, the, Germ the Chinese ambassador to Germany threatened that if Huawei wasn't approved, that this would seriously undermine the relationship. So, so it really is a political decision, and, and no matter how you frame it in commercial or other terms, or other people or others want to frame it, this is a commercial decision or a security decision, it is political for us, and it will be political for others as well. And if you think it's not political, tell that to a Canadian canola farmer. Right. Let me, let me come back. You touched on it. I want to circle back to it. What, what would be the consequences of saying yes to Huawei uh, and 5G uh, in this country while those two Canadians are in jail in China? Well, first of all, it would send the wrong message to China uh, that, that uh, uh, okay, you know, you can actually, uh, you know, uh, lock our people up and we're not going to take any serious action against you. Secondly. Um, it would, I think, imperil our security relationship with the United States. I don't think they're messing around. I think Pompeo called this a, a monstrous decision on the part of the UK. You know, so uh, he's, of course, uh, not given to, to uh, timid statements, but I think this is, uh, it's been roundly criticized in the United States, and I think we should be looking at that very seriously. All right, Mr. Calvert, always good to get your perspective. Thanks for it again this evening. Uh, we'll talk Thanks again soon. Take care. Take care, Peter.